welcome back to the Paddle and Fin Podcast Network. We're brought to you by Yak Gadget. For all your kayak fishing accessory needs, go to yakgadget.com. Pelican cases, coolers, and lighting. Go to pelican.com. The 153 Bait Company. For all your hard and soft bait needs, go to the153anglers.com. Now let's get this show started. Hey everybody, welcome back to Advanced Kayak Angler, show number two, The Deuce. So uh, yeah, I appreciate y'all listening as always. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about finesse wind baiting and how this kind of prompted me is it's not something I do very often. I, I'm definitely, I would say, a novice at it. And during the Bass Pickwick event here recently, I caught my fifth fish, fifth keeper that put, got me. It was a difference between me getting a check and not getting a check. Don't want to finesse swim bait. I threw an Okashira screw head with a spark shad on there. And uh, and yeah, that was the difference in between making making a little check and going home with nothing. So I definitely, it's it's a technique I need to learn more. And I think for a lot of people, I enjoy finesse fishing, but generally people kind of, a lot of people are, are do not enjoy finesse fishing. And, but I think this is one of those techniques that if you have it in your arsenal, you're a better angler. So yeah, here we go. So I got three people who are excellent at it, who have won money at it. And uh, yeah, three of the best anglers in the country. So we'll go ahead and Bring them on now in alphabetical order because none are better than the other. We have Catherine Field, <laughs> Jim Rodman, and Kurt yeah. Smith. How y'all doing? Hey, man. How's it going? Hey. Thank y'all for being on. Well, I always think like whenever I do the thumbnail on a video where I bring yeah. people on like, oh, why? You know, it's like a tiny slight. Like, why did they bring me on first? Or <laughs> why is it my name first? So I always do alphabetical. So you if go. you're ever on the show, right. that's why. All right. All right. Fair enough. I do like Catherine Besso. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> That's okay. I would too, man. I don't blame you. Uh, <laughs> That's just the truth for sometimes. Look, look, having having the last name uh, starting with F is great in Turny X too. Because when I get a goose egg, I'm at least in front of a bunch of other people with like W as their last name. So <laughs> always time accounts. So. Uh, All right, so we'll do a quick intro. If people don't know who you are, Catherine, we'll start with you. Tell everybody who you are and how you got into f kayak fishing, I guess. Oh, my gosh. That's a <laughs> kayak. Catherine Field, you can call me Kate. Um, yeah. Kayak fishing, been doing it a couple years. Um, I'm one of those crazy people that drives around the country and just does as many kayak bass tournaments as I can. And I love throwing little tiny swim baits more than probably anything. Um, yeah. So there's me in a very tiny nutshell. How's that? I like it. So, yeah. All right. Tim, how about you? Uh, I'm Tim Rodman. Uh, some people might know me. Some people might hate me. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> I, I've been doing the kayak tournament scene for, you know, I'm a lawyer in Texas, so people hate lawyers. <laughs> uh, I've been doing the kayak tournament scene probably three years now, maybe, maybe four years. Uh, it was my first one. Um, just getting into the national scene now and uh, you know frogging's my, really my favorite thing to do yeah, I'm not gonna right. lie I, I love to frog I, I would frog every single time I could fish um, if I could but something I, I do love to do is throw finesse swim baits I'm with Kate I absolutely love it there's just nothing like a big old bass smacking a little bitty swim bait mm -hmm. taking off with your line so <laughs> just something I'm, I love to do and uh, we use a lot on salt water down here too so yeah. Yeah. What, what what kind of lawyer are you uh, estate planning and real estate mostly. Yeah. So, like, so the good kind, not the bad kind. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> not like an ambulance chaser. No, 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 no. The nice kind of lawyer. Well, so. I, I don't, we don't live in Texas. So maybe, I didn't know. Maybe you have commercials like, call me, you know, like, <laughs> you're one of those people on TV. I, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. The Texas hammer. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, man. That guy's, that guy's a trip. No, that's not me. I'm pretty boring. <laughs> So, so y'all have a guy named the Texas Hammer? Hey, he calls himself the Texas Hammer. We got the Gorilla <laughs> Gorilla something. There's an oh man. Uh, well, yeah, we have the Alabama Hammer. Uh, uh, oh yeah. yeah. I forget his name. Call me the Alabama Hammer. 
<laughs> so funny. Now, oh, that's so actually funny. how our the KFL team I'm on. That's how we got the name. It wasn't like, like hammers like good anglers. It was <laughs> Alabama hammers. Call him Mike. Oh, so, oh, Alabama yeah. hammers. No, <laughs> a big buck. And he's got one where he's hunting a deer. Yeah, it's don't don't say that. He's gonna give you a call pretty soon. So. I, hey, you took my name. Awesome. <laughs> I hope he does. That would be awesome. That's oh, funny. All right, Kurt. How about you, man? Kurt Smith, uh, I'm a very, uh, I love throwing finesse. You know, swim baits is just another, another one of the finesse baits that I throw. I love throwing. Yeah. And I want to talk about that that one you were throwing on Watts Bar a little bit earlier this year too. So, get, okay. get a little bit of juice on that if we can. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So, uh, so yeah. First, I guess we'll start um, just. Where to start? Like, if somebody's watching this and they've never thrown a finesse swim bait, where the heck do you start? Like, there's so <laughs> many, so many weights, so many different kinds, blades, no blades. What, if you were going to tell a beginner, this is what you need to check out first, what would you tell them? <laughs> uh, <laughs> first, first, <laughs> you you, what you heard. Yeah. Yeah. Who wants, wants to go first? Go ahead. Okay. Um, you know, if, if I was just to tell a brand new person who's never thrown one, I would say just go get a quarter ounce jig, you know, like like, little, like a regular, like you buy a Bass Pro shop, you can buy them anywhere, you can buy them at Walmart, and get a three-inch white swim bait and throw that. You're going to catch something on that. I mean, you will definitely catch something on that. May not be a bass because it's a small bait. It could be a, a bluegill. It could be a crappie. But you're going to catch something on it, and that's that, and that's what I would start with. Mm -hmm. You know, and then it goes in from there. You know, you go into techniques from there. But that'd be the basics for someone just starting into it. Gotcha, Tim. How about you? And and uh, you're, you're in Ohio, right? Oh, yep, yeah. yep, Ohio. Southwest Ohio. Tim's okay. in Texas, and Catherine, she's everywhere. America, <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> Um, you know, I kind of agree with Kurt. Um, you know, the, the weight really is just for me, the weight's going to be dependent on how deep or shallow you're fishing, right? Like here in Texas, you can fish a finesse swim bait in a foot or two foot of two feet of water, right? Um, especially during the shad spawn. Um, so here it really just kind of depends on how shallow you're fishing, what time of year it is, um, on the weight of the jig head. But, but I agree with Kurt, um, you know, a, a two and a half, three inch, white sometimes some type of shad type uh realistic swim bait a paddle tail um is generally my go-to um now i'll shorten it and lengthen it and stuff based on things but that you can't beat starting with that because it looks just like every little shad or minnow and every fishery across the country yep. you know you're going to get bit by something throwing something like that around mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah i definitely agree with kurt there now imagine with the you know coming into the fall like this is a going to start to be maybe the ramp up to the best time of year where finesse swim baits are the best because i'm guessing i, I don't know i'm not saying this by mm -hmm. my knowledge that in the fall whenever you have you know the fish are feeding on those tiny baits a finesse swim bait would be a, a great time to go so a great time for a show and Catherine, how about you this is where Tim Rodman's going to pull out his little prop because <laughs> which one, which I, one actually, do you want? I actually started with the white one he has. Yeah. Yes, right there. Let's see if I can hold them the right way. Yeah, yeah the Roadrunners. That is what I started throwing first <laughs> was the Roadrunner. Um, yeah. First, because they have a really derpy looking face, like a horse, <laughs> like, like a seahorse or something yeah. like that. There I we thought, go. The derpy I, face. That is it. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought about it. Yes, it is. It's very derpy. It's so funny. But, uh, but that's what I started on. And the reason the reason I like it, um, it adds not just not just sort of that swim bait, but it adds that little razzmatazz, a little, a little bit of a, a sound to it in the water, a little flash. And you know, as long as you don't let it crush into the bunch of the weeds on the bottom but it, you know a good retrieve on that well like kurt said the same thing that you're going to get bit on a lot of different things so if you're going to go for that crappie uh bass 
pike <laughs> like a lot of things want to destroy that uh little thing in there but yeah. i really love those roadrunners so sorry tim i stole your props because oh, no. i'm so jealous of them but i love those uh <laughs> i love those roadrunners and i started and, and fishing and those in utah actually because the the water visibility i was fishing was really um like two inches of visibility so i needed something that had that movement but the fish could find <laughs> what i was throwing so you know the audio because the, it makes a sound i i didn't know till i put a gopro in my tub and i started like <laughs> using uh swim baits and i don't does anybody else do this but i take my lures and i fill up the tub mm -hmm. and then i like put the gopro in and i and i i like to hear what they sound like underwater and stuff mm -hmm. and they have a really interesting sound underwater so i and I guess I'm the only weirdo that uh, <laughs> I'm not. records the sounds of my lures underwater, but yeah, yeah. you should put out an album like a <laughs> yeah, yeah. sounds from the tub. So yeah. somebody tubs. did that. Uh, somebody did that with the chatterbaits the other day, and the difference I can't remember who it was. It was a few months ago. This yeah, is like exactly wire, that. Wired the fish did that. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Yeah, about the different sounds is really yeah, awesome. Yeah, it's interesting what little underspins will make sound wise. So mm -hmm. it's worth it. Yeah. It's not just the flash. It's not just the razzmatazz. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> it's so, a derpy face. Yeah. It, <laughs> okay. What, that's been, what is the best time of year? Is it in the fall? Is it shad's falling? When when like if you had to pick one time, when is the best time to throw it? Spring mm. or fall. Spring. For sure. I mean those, those would be the two best times. I think you can throw, I throw them year round. I um, mean, you know, honestly, those little swim baits and, and, and going up to like a four inch or even a five or six inch paddle tail swim bait, um, man, you can, I mean, all it's an all year bait. Swim baits are all year baits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. I've thrown a lot of the bigger ones here on the Tennessee River and stuff, you know, the big hollow, belly, hollow bellies and things like that. But I've, I've never really gotten into the small stuff, but uh, mm -hmm. Y'all would say the same, so it would be spring mm -hmm. or fall, probably. I'm with Kurt. I throw it all year. <laughs> uh, it's just a different situation. Um, you know, shad spawn, obviously. And you know that's that here. It's April, late April, May. You know, getting into the summer months. It's a little different for everybody else. Um, you know, but I start throwing it late spring, and I'll throw them all summer into the fall. Um, I won't throw them so much in the winter time. Uh, I usually go to it like Kurt was saying, a little bigger profile that I yeah. can slow roll on the bottom a little deeper and stuff. Um, but I will use the road runners like Kate's talking about, and I'll just yeah. I'll hop them around a lot during the winter on the bottom. Yeah, and they seem to whack those pretty good. So yeah, I'm I'm pretty much I would say an all year as well, but um, I think summertime I actually skip them a lot um, up under stuff. So I skip up under docks and things like that um, and let them, especially with the Okashira screw head and a little tiny spark shad and skip that up under there and just let that little thing helicopter down. It's almost irresistible <laughs> to something lurking down there that just wants to destroy that. So there you go. Okay. So weedless, then I, I know I definitely get that you would want to throw a weedless jig head around weeds, but as for that swim bait, that's not really something you're throwing in cover. So when do you go to a weedless head versus a non weedless head? Or, uh oh, Kurt's got some. <laughs> well, you're going I mean, into grass, Kurt. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I throw them in grass, I throw them into cover, I throw them a lot of places that other people don't. And you have to run a weedless head, you know? And it and the deal is is like what kind of weedless do you want? Because I'll Texas rig them sometimes, and I will pitch them into the heaviest cover and burn them out like a spinnerbait, mm -hmm. you know, and, and and take away the finesse part about it and turn it into reaction bait, mm -hmm. you know, because I'll throw it right into that deep stuff and then burn them right out. Throw it into the deep stuff and burn them right out. Or you can get a jig head that has like a wire coming off of it, yeah. you know, which is weed less but you're not throwing that into heavy cover or at least i'm not throwing that one into heavy cover but yeah i, I mean i love throwing around if there's if there's like eelgrass uh -huh. you know and you get like a foot of water above it man i love burning them around that eelgrass 
grass all over the place, especially if there's little little spots, little bare spots in it. So sense. I mean, there's a lot of ways you can you can fish these. Okay. Yeah. And definitely. Yeah. Not, how about y'all? Same thing. And you, you just throw it anywhere, but you just go weedless. Uh. Um. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'll throw it anywhere. It I mean, I'll throw them. Them. In all fairness, there's I mean, grass everywhere. Yeah. yeah if, if you get a big one in Texas, it would be difficult, maybe, to get it out of the grass. Surprisingly, you. these little these little derpy face roadrunners right here. <laughs> these bad boys. I, I use these for redfish. Uh, okay. I pull redfish with these, so you'd be surprised how strong they are. You just got to throw them on braid. Um, but I, you know, they I think it's owner that makes them, they make a little one knot. I don't know if you've ever seen them, the little one knot underspins, mm -hmm. and, and they have a real small hook gap, right? And so you can fit it on these little swim baits like this. And yeah, uh, yeah like the, the flashy swimmer, right? Yeah, the flashy swimmers. And, and the cool thing about the flashy swimmers is they have that quick clip release for the blade. Yeah. Uh, the actual arm of the blade, you can take it off the head and just use the head as a weedless um, swim bait hook. And I use that all the time because mm -hmm. they have a real good balance. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, they make these nice little one knots that I, if if I really need to go weedless, that's usually what I'll do is I'll use those or, and I'll take the the flashy off if it's getting and just Texas mucked up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it's just that um, they have the screw locks. It's just, you yeah. know, the. Oh, yeah, flashy yeah. swimmers yeah they'll yeah, have yeah. the screw locks and i'll just pop that bottom blade off and and run them through the grass and it's it's pretty weedless it's really not that bad so, mm -hmm. so i i get that like a flashy swimmer type eight is going to have less a, a lot less vibration than a spinner bait but don't those two kind of overlap a bunch like when when are you going to go with like a bigger flashy swimmer with like a three or four inch versus uh, spinner bait. Uh, is there is there still enough room that you're going to use both, or if you have the flashy swimmer, maybe that's that kind of so, it's close enough. Yeah, so, sometimes. I mean, if they like, you know, if they're hitting on school and fish a lot, you, know, you want multiple blades or something like that, and they're just keying on it better, I'll switch to a spinner bait. But to be honest with you, I throw an understood more than I throw a a regular spinner bait. Because it's, it really is more of a finesse type presentation, and and I feel like my bite ratio with an understand is just way higher. And maybe that's probably just me. I probably just suck at throwing a regular spinner bait. So <laughs> I just throw the spinner bait. Really, just uh, most of the time, I'm just uh, just basically banging it around on the bottom really slowly um, because I that's something I don't feel like I can really accomplish as well with some small bait and i throw really small i throw really small spinner baits too uh i like throwing really compact small i don't know it's like a theme with me like uh, teeny is good so uh, yeah. teeny catches big fish it it does it does it does yeah bigger is not always better that's that's true. True. <laughs> really true. I didn't say that. <laughs> I said it. I'll admit it. I don't even care. Bigger is not always better in the fishing yeah. world. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So now we kind of have all that, and let let's go to to set up. How are you going to throw this? So let, let's stick. I, I know finesse swim baits can be such a big category. Let's say more like we were talking about before. Smaller quarter ounce, three sixteenths ounce head, three inch bait. What's your setup for that? Or like the smaller ones? Uh, like the smaller ones, um, I like to run the Picasso round uh, tungsten roundhead uh, ball jigs, and they come in two different size hooks on there, so I can change it from, you know, I can go from a two and a half inch swim bait, and I can go then to like a four to six inch, you know, and I can played off either one of those. That's like my favorite setup right there is quarter ounce and then just a little bit heavier if I'm trying to run a little deeper, you know, and those are my favorite setups, man. It's really a pretty simple setup. And I throw a lot of it on a spinning rod too. So I can really launch it way out there and cover a lot of water with it. Cause I use it a lot. Like a lot of people would use a spinner bait for like a search bait, you know, I'll go over to a big rocky flat that has lots of points on it. And I'll fan cast that thing and just work everything I can with it. 
-hmm. And so rod, reel, line, all that, what, what do you use? So uh, my rod would be uh, a St. Croix, obviously. It would be a medium light or a medium fast tip. I like to use H-strand uh, braid on there with a leader. And I'll run a 12 to a 17 pound leader. I'll run, a, I'll, I'll run a pretty heavy leaders yeah. because generally I'm fishing this a lot. In a lot of places, other people wouldn't fish a small swim bait or a swim bait in particular. So I run my leaders a little heavier so I can bang it around some rocks. So I can get it caught on some stuff and yank it out. Yeah, I'm surprised to hear 17. That's, but I mean, with, with what you're saying, throwing it around grass and cover it, it makes sense why you're doing it. Right. And when you hook a really big fish, I don't know about you, but when I'm fishing around cover, I don't want to be like an eight pound line. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because when you hook into a big one, it's going to be like you're not going to have a whole lot of time to get them away from that cover, you know? Tim, how about you? Um, well, going to that line thing, I, I just pray a lot when I get a big fish and hope it doesn't break me <laughs> off. Uh, so I, I, I'm, I'm about the same. I throw mine on a spinner rod most of the time. It's just easier to cast it around. Um, I'm using 15 to 20 pound uh, fins braids. I use wind tamer because um, it, it just cuts through the wind really well. Um, but instead of using a, a floral leader, a lot of times I'll use a, um, a copolymer leader, like a P-line P CXX, or I think it's CXX, um, that's almost clear, just because I've noticed I can put a really long leader on there with it, and it, it's smooth and it casts well, and it doesn't have the memory problems that like a lighter fluoro or something does. So it just casts a little better for me. Um, that's really all I'm throwing. I'm throwing on like a seven-foot medium, medium light rod. And like I said, man, I, I don't even set my drag that hard. I just pray a lot if I get, if I get a big one and hope it doesn't pull me off into something else. So, but I, that's what I throw it on. I mean, they're light, so you got to be able to cast them. You want to have a lighter line, a lighter rod, you know, something you can really sling these. Because if you're trying to throw it on a bait caster, it's just, it's not going to work very well. So. Yeah. Catherine? I, uh, I'm a person that likes super super light jig heads so um i use uh often the okashira like the gosh is it like a 1 I can't. it's like there's there might be 3 sixteenths might be but it's like they're one of their smallest uh, lightweight okashira screw heads i like or i use the smeltinator by bass tactics that's the other one i like to use um uh i use a a Dobbin 7.2, uh, it's a medium light sort of uh, ecstasy line rod. And I run, Ooh. I run a 15 to 20 pound braid with eight to 10 pound leader, depending a couple times I'll, bu I'll bust up to a 12 pound. If I'm around a lot of muscles, <laughs> like I was in yeah. Champlain or something like that. Um, but I like super, super light, um, mainly because I, I don't do straight retrieve a lot. A lot of the times I'm um, trying to mimic sort of stunned fish and, and doing sort of an erratic retrieve with a lot of falling. So, you know, I, I'm, especially if I'm trying to do something, do that in more deeper water, um, I just, you know, I'm super patient. I was just having a flashback about with Kurt uh, when he's talking about eelgrass because I swear, Kurt, when I when I first met you, it was on lacrosse, and everybody asked me like, "What are you doing?" I was around a bunch of eelgrass, and I think I was telling you guys I was throwing like a a, a hula stick on a Ned rig jig head that I was swimming around the eelgrass on this little <laughs> tiny like one fifteenth Ned, and everybody looked like I, I was insane. But I looked at Kurt, and he's like. You know, probably, <laughs> probably wanted to tell me I should use a swim bait, but I was I mean, essentially doing something very similar with that. But um, but I, I like super light. I've caught really big fish on that. Um, there's just something about that that wants they just want to crush something that's obviously needs to be put out of its misery. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, and and it'll hold. I use a spinning rod, so it'll hold. But. And, and like Tim, I, I, I do a lot of drag management and, and some yeah. people uh, comment rather rudely to me about drag management, but I caught, uh, when I was on Champlain, I caught like these, I don't know, they were, 
I couldn't lift them with one hand, and I can lift a bag of dog food. So I don't know like how big this uh, dang drum I caught. It was so heavy, I had to like lean it on my chest. And that thing took me a little while to get in, but I caught that thing. You know, it was at least like 30 pound drum on that little tiny <laughs> thing in the tournament. Everybody's like, why don't you cut it off? I'm like, I want to see what that thing was, you know? Yeah. <laughs> dragging me yeah. around, you know, wondering what, give me a sleigh ride around Lake Champlain of that thing. But, <laughs> but uh, man, it's amazing. It's, it's such a rush to catch massive, aggressive fish on these little, mm -hmm. tiny baits with, with a light pole. And, uh, man, there's nothing like it. It's like, catching you know i i suppose if you're like out on the on the ocean and catch some like sailfish or something like that maybe it's same rush but there's just something about that screaming drag and you gotta like try and figure out how the heck you're gonna get this thing in the boat with your little tiny hook and <laughs> it's sort of it's a big rush i love it so. yeah i had looked it up on tackle warehouse the okashira they sold in a a 16th and an eighth ounce Sixteenth. Oh, okay. That's a one. Sixteenth. Yeah. yeah. Oh, a white one. Okay. That's yeah. light. Yeah. That is I know. I know. Um, I like dainty. <laughs> that's like one of the beauties of of swim of these of fish and small swim baits is just the diversity of how and how you can rig it and then how you can fish it. You know, it's just that's to me is what makes the bait very because it adapts itself to any situation. You know, you can fish eelgrass, you can fish cover with it, you can fish 50 feet with it, you can fish one foot with it. I mean, there's not a whole lot of baits. You can't do that with a square bill. Right? <laughs> no. You know what I mean? You can't, it's not that versatile, you know. So Tim and Kurt, if uh, let's say more open water, uh, is there, what retrieves are you using? Uh, like Catherine, is it, you're kind of letting it fall a lot or straight retrieves or? Or just letting the fish tell you what they want. Uh, it's always for me. It's always uh, the, letting the fish tell me what they want. You know, I you know, I just did a video about it not too long ago, and I got like three basic ones that I use. You know, a straight retrieve, a jerk bait kind of retrieve where you're snapping it and letting it fall, snapping it and then letting it fall, and then uh, just then then reeling it and then pausing it, reeling it, pausing it, reeling. It. And those are like my three main ones. But, you know, it's like really whatever the fish end up telling you how they want it, you know, because sometimes it's weird. Sometimes you got to rip it off the bottom and they're biting it right as it's tearing, right as it's taking off because they're, they're just keying in on that. And then other times it's all about the fall where it has to be falling for them to, to want to pick it up, you know. And like we were talking about like Watts Bar, it was all about the fall. I didn't even feel the fish on the line hardly ever. I never felt a thump because it was kind of cold out. They were just picking Tiger. it up, kind of, you know. And, 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 and you know, I, and, I, and I recorded myself, so when I watched the video. I see myself just like kind of setting the hook, and there would be nothing there, like about eighty times, because you just didn't know when one was on there. You let it hit, fall, and drop, and I'd yeah. feel anything, like maybe it bumped a, a small rock or something. And I'm like setting the hook every time, yeah. you know. And a few times there were fish on there, but. You know, so it's, it's just different. You, gotta, you really got to dial in what the fish want. Tim, what, do you have a go-to? Like where, where you start, I guess. Um, I, I'm exactly like the other two. It's just what the fish want, right? Um, you know, sometimes they'll tell you without even throwing uh, your bait. You'll see what they're doing. They'll be popping and chasing shad. You know, like we just had a tournament um, here that I did terrible in because I couldn't figure out where the heck my fish went but when i was free fishing they were sitting there popping shad all across the top of the water right you could see the busting them out of the water and so they only wanted it at the top they wouldn't even touch it on the bottom right and then there's other days where it's like kate's talking about you just throw it out there and you sometimes you just gotta bounce it on the bottom and hop it every once in a while and they'll whack it it it's really just kind of nuanced to what the fish are doing at that particular time I mean, it, it takes a minute to figure it out sometimes, you know, you won't get a bite for a little while, but once you figure that out and then you can do it over and over and over again, and you'll get a lot of bites on these swim baits. If you figure the pattern out where they want it, you will get a ton of bites on finesse swim baits. It's just, mm -hmm. it happens every time you figure it out. 
So all right. So, <laughs> I love but, that laugh, Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, Kurt, Kurt knows what's up. <laughs> you're, you're so right, man. What you just That's said. Fun. Once you figure out what they want with a small swim bait, man, yep. they will just eat it and eat it and eat it and eat it and eat. I mean, they won't stop once you dial it in. Yep. And so when when are you going to the finesse swim bait? Is it whenever, like, <laughs> is Always. it whenever things <laughs> with Catherine's yeah. like all the time? Always. Yeah. yeah. I mean, is, is it whenever you see small bait, is it things get tough or, or I just, use it to find fish. Yeah. I use it like a search bait or I don't know. It's like, especially the Okashira with it, like a spark shad. It's like a little, like a spy bait almost. And I just cover a lot of water with that. And if I'm going to get, find a bite, I'm going to find it really quick with that. And it's just, I find it a lot easier to, to just fan cast and work my way through different stuff with that. So when I, I do have to ask this, Catherine, when do you use both the spark shad and the Hezodong or just the, cause like Greg Blanchard, you see him go from one to the other. I'm like, it's like the same bait or, or no, uh, Chris Aldane. He, oh, this, this right now, though, this Hezodong, I need to put that on. <laughs> like the same bait do you use both or just one um i i have both i tend to use a spark shad more than a hazardong um i feel like it's balanced a little differently for especially with the little light stuff that i'm throwing I, I as it just it just feels like it works better with what i want to do but yeah and it's, what, i mean they're just so hazardong i don't know i don't know it just feels so narrow to me uh, compared to the spark shad, just feels a little more balanced on it. And is there a time whenever you're using the screw head, not the screw head, or just yeah? Always no, the, there's times I don't use the screw head for sure. Um, I don't know, but yeah. I tend to I tend when I'm just searching, I use the screw head because I just feel like again I like razzmatazz a little bit, a little sound, a little. Yeah. I just try to cover more basis, and I just feel like they're. If there's a fish that I'm going to, I'm going to find them in there with that. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. This is, I mean, I'll cover miles doing that little, throwing that little bait everywhere. Yeah. yeah. It's and different. can you give us a, a tub impression of what a screw head? <laughs> Come on. All right, Tim, when, when are you going at this one, bait? When, like, Ooh, that, like I'm seeing Always. this on my graph. This is um, this is it. This is the setup I need to be throwing at for that swim bait. When, when are you throwing? Uh, pretty much most of the time. I'm kind of the same way. I've well, I, 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 and I, I, I say, I say the throwing it. Ends of the spectrum. I've got it tied on. Usually, I've got you know some kind of three and a half, four inch of something tied on, and then I've got a smaller one tied on um, because you just if they're short striking my bigger one. Um, you know, I like to throw. I like to throw an underspin a lot with the um, the Exo and the the swimmers, right? Yeah. And um, I had a lot of short strikes on those the other day. But then you switch over to these smaller, you know, little finesse guys, and those short strikes completely go away. And especially if you're using open hooks and things like that, you really kind of eliminate a lot of loss of bites. I guess is the best way to put it. But really, I've I've got one tied on most of the time, except for winter. I mean, that's just. Yeah. Sometimes I'll do it in the winter. Um, it just depends. If I am doing it in the winter, it's just heavy. I'm trying to keep it on the bottom, make it look like a dying fish. Um, but, you know, it's like Kurt says, Kurt, <laughs> in case the Kurt not attend over there, you can always throw a finesse swim bait. Always. always. So much fun. <laughs> well, Kurt, I, it sounds like there's something you always have tied on as well. Huh? Always, <laughs> man. I mean, honestly, you won't. There's almost no, there's actually no chance you'll see me in my kayak without one tied on. I mean, I, it doesn't matter what I'm fishing for, or where I'm fishing, the, the tied on or a four inch. I mean, there'll, there'll be something tied on between three and four inches, guaranteed, no matter where I go. You know, and it's one of those baits that I've got so much confidence in that I know that no matter where I go, I'll, I'll find fish with it. You know, and, and one of the ways, you know, and here's a little thing that I do that helps me on new water with the small swim bait is I, I'll troll them to help me figure out what's going on. 
Like, you know, for instance, at Lake Champlain, I found a killer smallmouth bite and I never was able to fish it during the tournament because of the wind. But how I found it was, is there was all these rock piles that were separated by these big flats that had nothing in them. There was no weeds or anything, but there'd be these little rock veins that came out. And I just trolled a small swim bait over them and it helped me figure out where the smallmouth were and which of those rock veins that they were relating to. And it actually wasn't even the rock veins. And that's why I was targeting. It was the clear spaces in between them that they were swimming down. And then they would, then they would shoot up and they would yeah. saw stuff in the rocks and attack it. And that's, you know, and I, and I troll it to, to figure that bite out. Now you can't use that during the Hobie tournament. You can't do that, but it helped key me on the bite. And then after I found them with the swim bait, and then I start moving to other finesse baits to dial in like other ways I can catch them and exactly where they're positioned. Mm -hmm. um, it's just another way to use the swim bait. You know, it's just, mm -hmm. it's just such an amazing bait and it's just so versatile. Oh, that, that honestly, y'all are really opening my eyes to how versatile it is. I, I, I guess I kind of saw it as a, like it has its particular place, but yeah, all three of y'all are, have been very successful. All in that about moment. the derpy face. <laughs> <laughs> it's deadly. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all the questions I had. Was there anything anything else y'all wanted to tell people about finesse swim baits that maybe I missed? Don't don't quit on them. If you're not catching something on them, don't quit on them. That just means you hadn't figured out how they want it or maybe where they are. Uh, you know like we've been talking about the whole time once you find them they're they're going to start whacking it and you can almost always catch them because you get pressured fish really easily with these finesse swim baits too so your numbers your bites will always increase so i mean that's my biggest piece of advice throw them i mean a lot of people you know we're, we're bad about throwing something that we don't usually throw and then if we don't catch anything on it quickly we kind of just put it down and go to what we like right yeah. you got to throw them for a little while to get used to them you know, kind of figure out what you like, how you like to throw them, what you like to throw them on. Uh, but once you get it dialed in, it's an absolutely deadly tactic. Cool. Catherine? Wait. <laughs> I was, like, just zoning in on what Tim was like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just got it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, just. I don't are, know. are you at I, Hampton I can't... Inn? It, it looks like a Hampton Inn. I'm in the Holiday Inn. Holiday Inn, okay. Yeah, I'm in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Uh, okay. Oh, you're already up there. I like, man. Oh, <laughs> I'm so jealous. Yeah, I just, I just got here, but I haven't fished yet. I got to go to Minnesota tomorrow, so don't be jealous yet. But uh, oh, I'm still yeah. jealous. <laughs> but I, but I will be throwing a lot of swim baits uh, up here as well. So we'll see what happens. I, I guess the, uh, you know, if you're really starting out, um, with in in this. When I first started, I, I wasn't sure, like, you know, because especially when you have the derpy face things, with eyeballs and all that, I guess this is just for newbies. You don't have to cut off the face of the swim bait because it has eyeballs. <laughs> like yeah. I, when, I first, yeah. when I first started, I was like, it has, this has eyes and this has eyes. This looks really weird with like derpy face and these eyeballs <laughs> looking at each other. But why, Fish, why would they do that on the mega bass on the Okashira? If they know the spark shad is what you're going to I know. Them. And especially like, the spark shad has like already it's a derpy little look on it as yeah. well. And uh. But fish do not care if it has four eyeballs. So that's just a tip for you new people that have never <laughs> done it. Just leave it the way it is. Uh. And uh, they don't care. They're going to kill it anyways, no matter yeah. how many eyeballs it has or whatever. So just uh, don't be scared. I know some people will cut that, will cut it, you know, because they, I don't know why, but you don't need to just, just keep it on there. And if anything, it's just more, um, you want it to swim for me, swim naturally. So mm -hmm. if you, you see your swim bait, you know, starting to spin a little weird or something like that, start to do spirals and stuff like that, uh, you know, try, try and figure out how to fix that. Cause if it starts looking really unnatural, I think that if anything that impacts your bite, Mm -hmm. more you want it to really mimic an a live fish as much as you can and so the the fish will go like that it's there's just ways i'm not touching that thing that something's not right with that you want it to swim mm -hmm. right so 
there's my last thought I would have on that. Okay, so putting the bait on air straights is like, I guess, kind of like a net. It's yeah. really important. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, that's super important. You know, I mean, if, if I'm speaking to like someone who's just getting into swim baits or who's, who's not real comfortable with them, I would say vary your retrieves a lot. That's the biggest thing with swim baits is that you impart the action to the bait. Mm -hmm. So if you are just straight retrieving it over and over, man, your bite ratio is going to go way down. You're just not going to get the bites. That's not how you fish these. You, you I mean you really want to throw them out? You want to pop them? You want to use them like a jerk bait? You want to pause it? You want to drag it on the bottom and let it bounce off of stuff? Um, you know, and, and honestly, I, I would tell anyone who's getting into it, man, go check out my YouTube channel. Great you know, YouTube channel, channel, by the way. Yeah, yeah I got a couple of videos on on swim baits and the, the latest one I did really goes into the, the retrieving aspect of it. Um, and I would say, open your mind to the prospects of using it like a spinner bait, throwing it into cover, throwing it into places you wouldn't think to. Cause if you only throw it into open water, because that's where most people are going to start with an open hook. So they're not going to want to throw it into the wood, you know, especially like on a small swim bait, like a Kai tech or anything that has that type of long, uh, the, a body where you can uh, run a Texas rig with an offset worm hook, man, you can throw that anywhere. Once you set it up like that and you peg a weight to it or however you want to do your weight, there's multiple ways you can do it. You can really open up the areas you can fish these things. I mean, you can fish them anywhere. As soon as you Texas rig it, you can instantly fish it anywhere. Any cover, grass, weeds, branches, rocks. I mean, I've, I've even found a bite where I was pitching and flipping holes in weeds and basically weed mats that you would normally put a creature bait on, mm -hmm. but they weren't biting the creature bait. But as soon as I threw a yeah. two and a half inch swim bait in there and it was a little swim bait going up and down in these little holes, man, it was like every third cast I was getting bit. Wow. Put the creature bait right back on this exact same setup with the exact same weight, no bites. So they were, you know, they were obviously feeding not on bluegill, but something very small and something very white mm -hmm. swimming around in these mats. So it, it, open your mind, you know, have an open mind to how you can, how and where you can throw them. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I guess too much crazy detail. <laughs> something we always want to give somebody a chance to do before they leave is uh, shout out anybody that makes fishing easier for you. And we'll start with you, Kurt, since you were talking about your YouTube. Tell him how everybody can find you. Uh, you can find me at Smitty Fisher on YouTube. You can find me at Kurt Smiths on Facebook. Um, on Instagram, as Smitty Fisher as well, man. Um, you know, that's how you can get a hold of me. And uh, big shit. Are we thanking our sponsors now? Is that what we're doing? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I'd like to thank some of my, you know, my big sponsors or my main sponsors, you know, Hobie, Strictly Sale, Fishing Online. Um, Picasso. <laughs> Picasso. Of course, I'm like freezing. Uh, Put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> and those are like my main sponsors. And I want and th those guys really take care of me and do a lot for me. I'm like, I really want to thank them a lot. Good deal. Tim? Uh, the Texas thank Hammer. Uh, yeah, the Texas Hammer. Uh, no. <laughs> no, so no. I shouldn't say that too loud. He's going to come after me. Uh, that guy's going to show up at my door. Uh, no, I, you know, I, I would like to thank my wife first and foremost. She lets me fish a lot more than I probably should get to. Um, she let me move up here near Lake Conroe, so that makes me even fish even more. So uh, definitely thanks to my wife. Um, and, you know, Exxon Lures, they, they are awesome. They keep me stocked up with great baits. You know, yeah, right behind you. Yeah, you know how it is. Um, and the rod glove, you know, VRX fishing, those guys are great over there. Um, and they're, they're constantly keeping me stocked up with product. Uh, and then fins fishing is another big one for me, man. Those guys, they're, they're braid specific. Uh, they're out of Kentucky. I don't know if y'all have ever heard of them. It's called fins fishing, but they make probably the most amazing specialty braids on the market. And, and their, their stuff is just lights out. I, I don't know where I'd be without their braid now, probably still getting mad and, <laughs> at losing fish and getting angry at trees and saying things I probably shouldn't say to them. So, but, uh, yeah, those are my big, big sponsors i want to thank this time and uh definitely my wife good deal. <laughs> make sure she gets a good mention yeah i'll check them out Catherine. 
Um, definitely Hobie fishing. I mean, they're keeping me floating around right now and I'm, I'm having a blast and all the Hobie BOS and Omnia, Omnia fishing. I partner with them. Um, you know, I'm on the road most of the time and they have really fast shipping. They've got all the little swim baits that my heart desires and I can get them in two days to pretty much any wonderful hotel that <laughs> I'm staying at right now. And uh, definitely, and Dobbins Rods, man, I've been having a blast with them. And, and I just, like I said, this is one of my favorite things to throw. And uh, I'm just really happy to be able to come chat with you guys on that. So thank you very much. Give some love to my, my favorite little things that, that fish just love to destroy. So <laughs> What 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 kind of kayak are you in, Tim? Uh, a PA twelve. Yeah, a, a, the, be, a beat the, up PA twelve. I need to win some tournament tonight. So, I, yeah. I, maybe they go along like finesse swim baits and. <laughs> Hobie's, Hobie's taking over, buddy. Sorry. That's right. Man. That's right. <laughs> they're not, hey, they're great kayaks. I'm not putting. Oh, them they're good. They're good kayaks. All right. Well, thank y'all. We I appreciate y'all being on, and uh, everybody be safe out there. And uh, thank you. good luck if you're fishing this weekend. And always, as always, wear your PFDs. Thanks, thank everybody. You. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to another killer episode on Paddle in Fin. Don't forget to go check out our website at paddle, the letter N, in fin.com. Don't forget to check out the YouTube channel at Paddle in Fin. If you got a question, comment, want to hear from a future guest on a future episode, feel free to email us at paddle, the letter N, in fin at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Paddle in Fin on Facebook and Instagram. Shout out to our show supporters, Angler, the Angler Button, and app just makes for a better time on the water and creates a virtual logbook for every fishing outing out on the water. Shout out to Rocktown Adventures located in Northern Illinois for all your kayaking, camping, and hiking needs. Shout out to Jigmasters Jigs. When in doubt, get the jig out. Go to jigmasters.com.